Good day, everyone, and welcome to this brand new teaching series that I am doing on behalf of all of our ministers and our pastors worldwide in the Bible Way Global Network. I am Raymond Grant. I am the senior pastor of Restoration Church, and we are the headquarters for Bible Way Ministries International, where we serve many pastors and many churches in many different countries of the world. This video series is one of many intended to serve you in your various countries and time zones. I will be posting these videos online so that you can access them at your convenience because it is oftentimes difficult to meet in person because of conflicting schedules. I hope that this is a blessing to you and that you will share these uh, words of knowledge with your congregations to build them up and to see many, many people uh, part of the harvest uh, in this end time. Uh, the very first of these series of videos will involve two lessons on the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation. I will be using copywritten material uh, that has been presented to us in the form of a one-hour Bible study called Into His Marvelous Light. I appreciate those that have put this study together and developed this course of study, which in my opinion is the most concise lesson that exists on the plan of salvation. I will be beginning very shortly, but I'm asking you that before you begin to play this video, that you take a moment to pray and to seek the face of God, because there is nothing that we can do without him. That includes receiving the words of life, which Jesus describes as seeds, which if they're sown in the wrong kind of heart, or as he calls them, soil, then they will not grow and bring forth fruit. I ask you to have an open heart and an open mind, and as well, and just as importantly, an open Bible. Let us pray. Father in heaven, please have your way as we consider what it is that you want us to do. You certainly want us to know who you are, but you want us to know that in the context of salvation. For knowing you intellectually will not save us. We must know you personally. Bring us into a personal relationship with you, and I pray that we will continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you and who you are, even until you return. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for your anointing and for the impartation of wisdom at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, for the purpose of this video, I will be uh, sharing my screen with you so that you can see what I am seeing. And hopefully this will help you, particularly if you in an if you are in an area of the world where you might need to translate what I'm saying to your adherents. All right, let's begin the screen share at this time. All right, you should now be seeing uh, me and uh, the document that I'm looking at simultaneously, and I hope that you are able to do that. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, this is a one-hour Bible study. Its singular focus is the plan of salvation, which answers the question, what must I do in order to be saved? There's something to be saved from. There is someone to save you, and there is a process by which you must be saved. It is a singular process, and it is a universal process. It's a process that every man, woman, boy, and girl on this earth must employ in order to be saved by the Savior, who is the only person designated to save us. I pray that you would hear these words and you would heed these words. That word heed, H-E-E-D, simply means that you would not only listen with your ear, but you would obey with your feet. You would activate all that is within you to comply with what God is saying. As I described before, the title of this study is called 
into his marvelous light. All right, into his marvelous light. Let me just adjust my screen so that you can see more of the text. Into his marvelous light. And this is available as a PDF document online. And I will share the link with you later uh, on the screen. And there you can see the link at onehourbiblestudy.com. I'll repeat that, at onehourbiblestudy.com, all right? So you are able to go to that website if you have the means to get this either downloaded to your phones, tablets, or to your, your other devices, your computers, and you can have this for yourself. Or if you have easy access to the internet, you can also go to the internet and simply type in the web address to find the Bible study. Um, reading here, it says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. This is found in Psalm 119, verse 130. In preparation, the following Bible study was prepared to explain the plan of salvation in a simple, one-lesson condensed form with a teacher-to-guide discussion or by self-study. If desired, it can be divided into two parts by taking a short break between each of two 30-minute sessions, and that's how I'm going to try to do this. A recommended place for a break is after the section into the Gospels. Each participating student should have a copy of the study along with the Bible, preferably the King James Version, if it's available, and a pen or pencil. As each scripture is read, the student is asked to become involved, sometimes by completing a fill-in-the-blank or responding to a question. Additional comments and supplementary scripture references designated throughout the text by small numerals in parentheses or brackets are provided on page 14 for further in-depth study at a later time. May we also suggest that all participants take a moment to ask the Lord's help in understanding his word, as King David once did when he prayed, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. May God bless you as we travel together into his marvelous light. And 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, You should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Introduction. When walking out of a dark room into the sunshine, light can be blinding. As our eyes become accustomed to the light, we can see more clearly and enjoy the scenery that surrounds us. Likewise, when we look into the light of the scriptures, the brightness of truth can sometimes hurt. However, as our spiritual eyesight becomes adjusted, we can enjoy walking in the light. This Bible study is designed to allow us to walk in the marvelous light of the Word of God. We will be journeying into the scriptures by imagining we are back in the days of Jesus and the apostles, listening to them teach and preach the plan of salvation. In order to do this, we will be careful to rightly divide the word of the truth, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And we'll do that by concentrating on the highlights of the three main divisions of the New Testament in chronological order, including the following. Number one, the Gospels, covering the words and works of Jesus Christ. Number two, the Acts of the Apostles, covering the actions and preaching of the Apostles. And number three, the Epistles, covering the letters written by the Apostles to the churches they started in the book of Acts. We believe the scriptures are divinely inspired and of no private interpretation according to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Therefore, 
every effort has been made to present the pure word of God without adding to it or taking away from its teachings, according to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, and Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. It is not our intention to diminish any personal relationship you already have with our Lord. Neither do we desire to convince you of our own personal ideas or the creeds of any denomination. We simply desire to share the truth as it is written. Only by claiming the Bible as our sole authority can any of us be confident of our salvation. For it is the word of God and not the traditions of men that will judge us all in the end. Let us read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, as we begin our journey into the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Give me just a moment. I'm just getting this on my phone. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Say this. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Amen. Let us continue. We will begin with the Gospels. Hopefully, you have your Bibles. If not, hopefully, you have this document open on your computer. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and verse 14 tells us, The blank which was in the beginning and was God became flesh. Jesus Christ is the living Word of God, all right? And so the, the question now is, what word fills in that blank? What word fills in that blank? So you'll need to turn to John chapter 1, read verses 1 to 5 and verse 14. So I'm going to do that both with you and for you. It says, and I just need to switch to the King James Version. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And let's go to verse 14. It says, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, the question is, what was in the beginning? What was God? And what became flesh? Well, that which was in the beginning was the Word. The answer is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, if you can, fill in that blank with this, just like that. All right? Now, let's go to the 11th and to the 13th verses of John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 11 to 13. It says, if we believe in him and receive him, Jesus gives us power to become the sons of whom by a supernatural birth. 
He spoke further about this new birth one night to a ruler of the Jews. Now, after this verse, we will read all the verses first, and then we will answer the questions. But for now, let's continue. Let's read verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So our question says, if we believe in him and receive him, Jesus gives us power to become the sons of God. That is based on the word we just read. So Jesus gives us power to become the sons of God by a supernatural birth. He spoke further about this new birth one night to a ruler of the Jews. Let's go now to John chapter 3. And we are reading verses 1 to 8. It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, verily just simply means truly. Truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, based on what we read, let's deal with the question before us. The Lord told Nicodemus that everyone who wanted to see or enter the kingdom of God must be born again of two things. Those things are water and the Spirit. All right? We must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. The Word was God. And if we believe in Him, Jesus gives us power to become the sons of God. The, the means by which we are made sons of God is the means of the new birth, which must take place by water and the Spirit. Let's go to John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So, to our question, Jesus also told Nicodemus that whosoever 
believes or believeth in him shall have eternal life. Jesus mentioned two seemingly different requirements for salvation. One is being born again. The other is believing. Yet, this is not a contradiction. The next scripture explains how believing is related to experiencing the birth of the Spirit. We turn our attention now to John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. And it reads, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Here we discover that if we believe on him, we will receive his spirit, all right? We will receive his spirit if we believe on him. We find that scriptural belief is more than just a change in the way we think. It also results in a scriptural experience. Faith motivates us to obey, and obedience brings God's acceptance and blessing. Now let's go to John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36, and verses 42 and 43. John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while, is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Let's go now to verses 42 and 43, shall we? Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. So today, just as in Jesus' day, many believe on him, but they will not, they will not confess him for fear of what others will do or say. In verses 44 to 48 of John chapter 12, it says this, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So in response to their fearfulness, Jesus warns that his word will judge us. So we must be careful not to reject it. Rather, we should believe and obey it, no matter what others say or do. Let's continue to John chapter 17, 
John chapter 17. And we're reading verses 17 to 20. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So in Jesus' prayer for his disciples, just before his crucifixion, his crucifixion, he said, God's word is truth. He also prayed for us and all those who would believe on him through the apostles' word. Now, to find out what the apostles' message was to be, let us read what Jesus told them to proclaim. The setting of the following Great Commission scripture in Luke chapter 24, verses 45 to 49, is just after the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, and just before his ascension into heaven. And it says, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Here ends the very first portion of our lesson. Here are some questions that I think you should try to answer on your own. First question. Did the apostles preach the message Jesus commanded them to proclaim? Did they do that? Did the apostles preach the message Jesus commanded them to proclaim? Question number two. How was the promise of the Father fulfilled? Let us continue our journey into the Word of God by seeing what was preached and what happened at Jerusalem. We'll take a brief moment to pause now uh, before going into the second part of our lesson called Into His Marvelous Light, The Plan of Salvation. God bless you and thank you. 